Hello and welcome to Power Play. I am Pranjal Sharma. This is the show where we bring you face to face with some of the most influential policy makers of the country. Today we are going to be talking to Mr. Jyoti Dadu Sindhya. He is the Minister of State for Commerce and Industry. Mr. Sindhya, thank you very much for being with us. You know, it's interesting. Thank you for having me. The key issue of creating growth, jobs, employment lies with your ministry. A uh, lot of initiatives have been taken, but there is also some uh, some uh, positive and some negatives. Let's begin with the positives first. Uh, exports are looking very good right now, of course, helped by rupee. In your view, what is necessary to ensure that the growth momentum in ex exports is continued? Well, first of all, uh, you're very right. Exports have uh, have increased by almost 36% uh, last month to 24.8 billion, uh, over 18 billion uh, last year, uh, month on month. Uh, for the first six months, we have closed at about close to about 160 billion uh, dollars, um, over 105 billion dollars uh, over the same period last year. Uh, so we are up almost about 52 percent. Uh, that being said, uh, I think it's extremely important uh, that uh, we watch the situation very closely. Uh, uh, I am apprehensive that the effects of the eurozone uh, and the U.S. Uh, will certainly have uh, somewhat of an effect on our exports going forward. Uh, but having said that, I'm very op optimistic that we should be able to close this year uh, between close to about $280 billion in terms of exports, which will be up almost about 20% uh, over last year. Um, for me, what's most important is the fact that we have uh, the foundation that we tried to put in place in uh, the FTP of 2009. Uh, wherein we looked at diversification of markets. I think that is bearing a very, very rich dividends uh, over the last two years. Uh, our exports to Latin America, to Africa, to Oceania, parts of Asia uh, have grown by almost about uh, 60 to 70 percent uh, year on year uh, over the last two years uh, in terms of a CAGR. But are these uh, the value-added products or are these the traditional uh, products? These are value-added products, so right from engineering uh, to chemicals to uh, uh, pretty much across the board, uh, uh, not just only pure petroleum products but uh, and, and uh, natural resource, uh, but really value-added products. Uh, so uh, that is bearing rich dividend. Uh, on the 13th of this past month, uh, we also, looking at the near-term scenario, announced a uh, addendum to the foreign trade policy wherein we put in place close to about 800 crores worth of incentives through multiple schemes. We've got a special bonus benefit scheme in place for 50 products uh, uh, with a 1% uh, FOB uh, value in terms of a duty credit. Uh, we've got a um, um, focus product scheme uh, across 130 products that we're looking at. Uh, focus market scheme where we've increased coverage to close to about 41 new markets. Uh, and a market link focus product scheme where we've looked at uh, the silos and the verticals of, uh, of tractors uh, and sugar products, uh, sugar machinery and sugar products across specific geographies uh, to enable those exports to rise. So it's a, uh, and also for textiles and apparel. So it's been a, uh, a policy that has been uh, focused at areas which need increasing attention. And that's been our endeavor over the last two years. Uh, it's been a very, very volatile situation across the world. And therefore for us in India, uh, it's been uh, our endeavor to monitor this on a six monthly or a quarterly basis and fine tune our, our, uh, our uh, process while we're doing so. But at the same time, you know, competition for Indian textiles, which is a critical part of the overall exports basket, that's increasing from uh, some of the other South Asian countries. At the same time, the demand is tapering off. So to be more competitive, you have to reduce the costs of operations for a lot of the exporters. And I'm not even talking about subsidies, which is a totally different issue. How do you hope that this cost effectiveness will be improved? Well, what we've done from a ministry point of view, and I'm talking about in my capacity as Commerce and Industry uh, Minister, is to uh, uh, enable uh, greater access into the European and U uh, US markets uh, by uh, incentivizing exporters to, to look at those markets and giving them an incentive um, uh, whilst they export there. Uh, in terms of our export basket altogether, out of last year's numbers of close to about 245 billion, um, uh, almost 60 billion has come from engineering. Engineering is very, very uh, surely becoming the mainstay of our export engine. Uh, it's grown by about 100% uh, last year. 
and this year in the first six months again by close to about 85 percent. Uh, so that we are looking at when we built our uh, doubling export strategy, we're looking at engineering again doubling uh, by 2013-14 to close to about 150 billion dollars. So. There is the national manufacturing policy, there is a special economic zone uh, uh, policy, then you have the national manufacturing investment zones uh, policy. How does it all come together? Are they sort of overlapping or is there a common theme? Yes, it's very simple. I think uh, the grand policy is the NMP, which is the national manufacturing policy. And I think uh, the SEZ, the NIMS uh, structure is subsumed in that policy making exercise. Uh, our key imperative is really to take manufacturing as a percentage of GDP from 16% today to about 25%. And what are the levers that we need to put in place to be able to do that? Uh, I think most importantly, we need to be able to provide an environment uh, where clearances, processes uh, for large export oriented uh, uh, units and zones uh, are, are very uh, uh, effectively put in place uh, so that there's not multiplicity uh, of, of permissions and approvals that exporters have to go through. And that's been envisaged in the NIMS, uh, National uh, uh, Investment Manufacturing Zones. And many SEZs will be possibly part of those names that we do set up. Um, uh, and I think that's, uh, I'm quite hopeful that over the next uh, uh, near, near term, maybe uh, even later today, we will see that happen uh, in, in its finality. Uh, I want to talk about this national uh, manufacturing investment zones and the special economic zone. Now, a lot of jargon and a lot of talk, but do you think there's a confusion at some level which where the clarity has not been articulated enough they're not sure where exactly, what is the objective of each of these policies. How do you clarify this confusion? As I said earlier, it's, it's, it's extremely clear. I think uh, the NIMS in, in many ways can also, uh, there are many SEZs that can be part of the NIMS. Uh, and uh, we're extremely clear that the SEZ policy that we announced in 2006 has led to tremendous, as you mentioned, uh, job creation, value addition in our economy. Uh, close to about uh, uh, 150,000 crores has gone in as investment, close to about 350,000 jobs have been created. Uh, exports have been uh, climbing at a rate of almost 60% per year from these SEZs. So they've been in many ways a part of the economic engine. Uh, and it's our fervent hope that the NIMS will, will uh, also, uh, once approved, uh, become that engine of growth for the economy. I think the NMP is integral to be able to combine multiple ministries together and provide a single gateway uh, to, to, in, to industrialists, to business persons, so that real job creation and value addition can happen.